morning from Lille and welcome at our event celebrating the project's results of Intrek Europe. My name is Petra Polaškova and I will be your host today. What we'll be looking at today, we'll have a talk with people behind four of the project results stories that you voted for. Those stories are from our new publication, When Europe Cooperates, Regions Benefit. So before I get to more information about our event today, let's have a look at some short video about the publication. 30 years of Interreg, 30 years of success. To celebrate this, I'm happy to present you today our new publication, When Europe Cooperates, Regions Benefit. We show you 30 success stories from regions of all our 30 partner states. Results. We wanted to show what our projects achieve, how they improve things in their regions. In each story, we show how a partner from one region brought home good ideas and inspiration shared by other partners from other regions in Europe. For example, uh, in one of the project stories, they tested electronic buses in Prague, which was an inspiration from Italy and Cyprus. If you go to the beginning of our publication, there is a map and click on the country and it takes you directly to that project story. Each project has multiple stories like these. We turned this multitude of results into infographics, one for each topic. First, we start with eight stories in research and innovation. We follow with seven stories about the competitiveness of SMEs. Then we have another seven stories about low carbon economy. And finally, there are eight stories about the environment or resource efficiency. But that's not all. We have a very nice foreword by Elisa Ferreira, our European Commissioner. She invites all to have a look at our stories for inspiration in European integration. A few pages that follow give a very nice overview of our program, Interact Europe, what we do and what we achieve. You can also read two stories about the services our policy learning platform offers. Our program director concludes with some information about the future of our program. And one practical thing, at the very end, we have a full list of 258 projects with links to their website. It might come handy. Let's open the publication, dive into the 30 success stories about policy change. Have a read and get inspired. So you have just seen um, a little overview of the publication. And I hope if you have a chance, you can be inspired by it. Um, so what is ahead of us? We will talk with four representatives of projects that you voted for. We'll have a little interview with them. You will be able to ask questions. And that brings me to a few technical comments and technical notes for you. Each of you has on the right side a little menu. And there you have a tab called questions. That's the place where we invite you to send your questions during our event. Also, if you face any difficulties with the sound or video, please post it there and tell us. We will try to help you with that. Also, if you have any other comments, uh, this is the place to tell us about it. We'll be sharing it with other participants so that you can talk with them in a way as well. Um, it's not only me who is here behind the camera, but I have my colleagues, Irma, Mia, Julie, and uh, Josephine from the communication unit here in the Secretariat in Lille, who are helping me to support this event, who will react to your comments uh, in the chat, and who help me with the presentation, with the polls, and uh, with any technical difficulties that might arise. Uh, one comment, this uh, event is being recorded and the recording will be available at the end of the event and you will be receiving a link to it in the follow-up email that will come 
uh, to your, your email inbox. Now, uh, I think it's time to have a look who is with us at this event. So if I can ask Mia, my colleague, to launch our first poll. So tell us, how do you know Interreg Europe? Are you uh, a project? Uh, are you involved in one of our projects? Or maybe you were involved in one of our projects. Maybe you work for our program in one or the other capacity. Maybe you are just our fan and you follow what our program does. So please let us know. Or maybe there is another way how you are, how you are engaged uh, in our program. So please tell us. And I see that you are voting. We have a number of people who already voted. So let's give us maybe 10 more seconds. Yeah, and I think that we can close the poll and share it with others so that they also can see who is following our event and who is with us. So we can see that large majority of you are or were involved in our projects and actually know what cooperation in a project with partners from all over Europe is about. So welcome and we are very happy to have you with us. Then we see that also some people who work for our program uh, are with us as well. If you are other, maybe you can tell us in the question field, in the comment field, uh, in what capacity are you actually connected to our program and maybe why you are joining us, which we are very happy that you do. So please let us know. And now I think it's time to have a look at the four projects that did win your votes. So please, let's have a look at the topics. So now it's time uh, to have a look at the first stories that come from the topic of research and innovation. Let's have a look at stories which represent cooperation results in research and innovation. There are eight of them. In Austria, our project Increase contributed to better innovation support. Local companies now have available a so-called house of digitalization, which provides them help with their digital innovation needs. This support service received over 355,000 euros of ERDF. The inspiration came from France. In Cyprus, our project Whole Care contributed to independent aging. Elderly people are now benefiting from telecare services, which enable them to preserve their independence and continue to live at home. The new telemedicine technology received support of 400,000 euros of ERDF. The inspiration came from Slovenia. In Denmark, our project Islands of Innovation contributed to better climate adaptation. The Danish island Samsur has tested a new tool to calculate the entire CO2 emission and climate impact of new local developments. The new tool has been tested with the support of 180,000 euros of ERDF. The inspiration came from Portugal. In Estonia, our project Niche contributed to the development of new healthy food products. Local SMEs are now receiving improved support and can use new forms of knowledge transfer, making their food products more innovative. The inspiration came from Finland and the United Kingdom. In Ireland, our project EcoRIS3 brought business and academia closer. Local SMEs can now exploit public research results and bridge the cyber skills gap thanks to a new cluster called Cyber Ireland. The development of the cluster received 340,000 euros of ERDF support and was inspired by good practices from Italy, Latvia, and Lithuania. In Latvia, our project Ratio has brought innovation to rural areas. Local SMEs now have more flexibility to choose their research and development provider using an innovation voucher. 
the inspiration for the changes in the local innovation support system came from Italy, Ireland, Poland, and the Czech Republic. In Poland, our project Bridges contributed to better connections between the bio-based SMEs and the latest research. Some 63 SMEs with innovation potential are now receiving tailored support. The SMEs were identified thanks to a tool inspired by a good practice from Greece. And finally, in Portugal, our project Reset contributed to more environmentally friendly textile manufacturing. Textile companies are now testing new technologies, such as reusing algae waste in three projects. The three projects received 1.97 million euro of ERDF. The inspiration came from Spain and the Czech Republic. So uh, these were our stories, our projects featured in the publication. And now it's my pleasure to invite my colleague, Anna Mihaljevic, uh, who is a policy officer following uh, research and innovation projects to announce the winner. So who did get the most votes from research and innovation? Anna, tell us. Good morning, everyone. Uh, it's my pleasure to be here with you this morning and to announce the winner in the topic of research and innovation. So without further ado, the winner is Bridges, winning a total of 26% of all the votes cast in this topic. So congratulations to Bridges and to all of the finalists. So if I can ask Dorota Skvarek to join us as well, who is representing the project Bridges. Dorota, are you there with us? Yes, yes. Hello, Dorota. Good Hello. morning. Thank you, Anna. Good morning. Good morning Good to morning. all of you. <laughs> so, Dorota, uh, you won uh, your project. Um, did you expect it? Did you expect that people will be interested in the topic of your project? Well, I'm uh, I'm very happy that uh, we get so many so many voices that so many people apprised our our project. Uh, so what what else can I can I say? I'm very happy for that. Although I I think that all the projects that are in publication and they bring uh, lots of lots of new ideas, lots of uh, very practical solutions. So it's worth to um, to use them. And so I'm happy that we are uh, among so uh, so many nice people and uh, very good projects. <laughs> okay, okay, Dorota. Uh, just to introduce you completely, Dorota Skwarek is representing Lubelskie region in Poland. So tell us uh, in a few words, how would you describe a Bridges project? What is it about? What was it about? But the Bridges project is very important, uh, especially for us in, in Lubelskie. Uh, Lubelskie is very rural region, so um, everything what is linked with agriculture and food processing is very important. These are very important branches in our region. Uh, and we wanted to uh, to enhance the companies from from food uh, uh, food industry, but also from uh, other branches that are linked with bio, uh, to um, to be more competitive. But we do not want them to be more competitive on prices. We want them to be more competitive in innovative way because of the um, new products, new quality of uh, of the products. So we wanted uh, the companies to enhance to cooperate uh, in greater extent with our universities, with our R&D um, units. And the second thing was to, to enhance them also, to uptake, to, to be more involved in, um, in getting support from structural funds. Uh, of course, our regional operational programs uh, up to now, they offer a um, wide range of, of support. But what we could see that um, many companies from IT sector were active, not so much the, the bio-based um, sector. So we wanted to ex enhance them and help to some extent um, them to, uh, to be more visible and to, to use the structural funds. Okay, so you are saying these were all your goals. This is why you joined uh, the project. Have you achieved it? Can you tell us what is this achievement? What is this change that you managed to achieve thanks to Bridges Project and thanks to the cooperation? Tell us what, what now your companies can get. 
Yes, uh, well, um, I must say that um, the cooperation and and uh, getting our companies involved in the whole project, um, uh, we had to to do um, different steps uh, to to enhance them to um, to involve in in our activities. But with what we could see, uh, we organized many um, many information meetings, so the companies. Uh, had um, had possibility to talk directly with people from the universities, from research and technology uh, and um, uh, commercialization centers, because what we could see, uh, especially among the companies from uh, from the food processing and food sector, um, they are not very prone to to talk with the academia. They feel like uh, I don't know, not a good partner for them, not not sophisticated enough <laughs> partner for, for them so um there's a kind of i don't know a shy to to get in contact so thanks to those um those uh, information uh, meetings they could learn they could see that there are possibilities that there are people in academia who uh, have the solutions for their companies actually and it's not that hard to start to speak with them so uh, this is one uh, one thing uh, that was very important in our uh, in our project the second thing that was very important uh, we had a group of companies that were um, interested in uh, um, in uh, having uh, having the, the project proposal to regional operational program or at the pro for the program at national level. So apart from those um, the contacts with uh, our research uh, centers who help them to to come up with the idea with project idea to uh, then to um, to write the, the project proposal what we could uh, do on uh, on the regional level uh, we had um, a nice talks with an, our managing authority and thanks to that talks uh, the managing authority organized additional call for proposals for the companies that were uh, in process with us with uh, with the bridges project and they had some ideas what could uh, what could managing authority change in the rules of uh, of the next call for pro proposals so some of them were really uh, listened by by the managing authority and we achieved this the change, uh, the change of the uh, of the rules of of the call for proposals. Okay, now well, that sounds that sounds great that you managed to really get uh, listened to uh, by some people who do take decisions that are very important then for the companies and for the universities, so that this cooperation can work. Uh, my question now, uh, it's an interregional project, Bridges. So where did you find this inspiration? What was this inspiring thing that you found uh, somewhere else? And where did you find it? Um, this is very important and this is very useful in interact projects that we can really um, have insight in different systems, in different point of views, in different attitudes across Europe. So it's very uh, it's very good for us to have inspiration, inspiration from from different countries. Um, well, this is a journey. Actually, each project is a journey, and you you meet different people. We could uh, take some uh, some stakeholders for uh, to to different regions. But what was important for us that we could transfer the good practice uh, that we found in Greece. Uh, of course, this this um, this good practice was not in 100% uh, tailored for for our reality, but that's not the point. Uh, what we could get it's um, an almost ready to go tool, the tool that the companies could self assess their readiness for uh, for innovation, if they are ready for that, if there are some changes or challenges that they have to overcome still on this on this road. So we could use um, this um, uh, this uh, auto diagnostic uh, tool that was uh, prepared by by Crick's. and um, we of course um, adapted that uh, that tool to our reality at some additional questions and so on. 
but we uh, saved a lot of time and a lot of energy to come up by our own with such a such a tool so that was uh, that was really really good and really nice and it really speed up um, our our activities in in the region okay well that's 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 wonderful to hear you know that learning from others served your region to improve things last question before we move to another project because yeah there are three more uh where was there anything difficult was there anything difficult about working with others and finding maybe this inspiration well i would say that um with with uh, the cooperation with uh, our partners in the project um from uh, from greece from from finland uh I wouldn't say that there were some pro there some problems. I think that we got used to work in uh, in this space in European space. So it's it's always inspiration for uh, if we meet, if we talk, if we start to um, to to discuss on topics uh, that are and problems that are in our region, how the other region, how the other partners would say maybe you could try this maybe you could try that maybe you could uh, exploit some uh, some uh, some ways so that is very very inspiring um the challenge that we have still in region is um, getting a tract of of the companies and to convince them that uh, it's really not that hard to cooperate with uh, innovation centers and that uh, administration is not only for, for, you know, for technical reasons and for administra administrating, but also for, for developing. We are also here to, um, to support our SMEs in, um, in their development, and we try to, to do that and to, to serve them. Well, I, I, I'm so glad to hear that this interregional cooperation brought so much inspiration and brought new ideas and actually encouraged companies or showed the companies that speaking with universities works, that it's not that difficult and that they can innovate, that it's not only about the IT development, but even about products. That's wonderful. Well, congratulations. Congratulations to Bridges. Thank you, Dorota, for being with us. We, if you have in the audience any questions about this project, uh, any questions about the tool that they were using, you have the question tab to ask your questions. Uh, also, there were some other research and innovation projects in our publication. Some of them are here with us. If you use the acronym and write a question, we can send it to them or later on pass it to them. So please ask your question. And I thank you, Dorota, for the moment. I will ask you again in a few minutes after we introduce our second topic, which is SME's competitiveness. So thank you, Dorota. And let's have a look at another set of stories about SME competitiveness. Let's have a look at stories which represent cooperation results in the competitiveness of SMEs. There are seven of them. In Belgium, our project RCIA contributed to creating an incubator for creative growth. Local creative industry SMEs can now count on support from the new incubator, which provides a portfolio of services, including access to the leaders of the creative industry field. Over 250,000 euros of ERDF helped in the incubator setup. The inspiration came from Latvia and Spain. In Croatia, our project ATM for SMEs contributed to modernizing a development center for SMEs. Local companies are now accessing early development guidance and an expanded portfolio of non-financial services in the local development center and technology park. 220 euros of ERDF went to equipping the center the inspiration for the SME services came from Norway. In Finland, our project IEER contributed to strengthening the local entrepreneurial ecosystem. Local young entrepreneurs and startups are now receiving enhanced support thanks to pooled funds. 880,000 euros of ERDF has already gone to four projects enhancing business skills. The inspiration for pooling funds came from Spain, France, and Denmark. 
In Malta, our project, Design for Innovation, has given space to creativity. Local, cultural and creative micro-entrepreneurs now have a brand new Valletta Design cluster with co-working spaces. The new cluster received 2.72 million euro of ERDF. The inspiration for the space's layouts, activities and management came from the United Kingdom. In Slovenia, our project Trino contributed to transitioning traditional SMEs into the digital space. Local SMEs in traditional sectors now have a new voucher scheme which helps them develop new products and services using digital and other innovation tools. Over 3.58 million euro of ERDF has gone to the vouchers so far. The inspiration for the scheme came from Ireland. In Sweden, our project Compete In contributed to creating a new export center. The new center, which provides financial incentives and business advice, has adopted a more demand-driven approach to supporting SMEs with export potential. The center and new support schemes received 1.36 million euro of ERDF. The inspiration came from Poland and Italy. And finally, in Switzerland, our project SME Organics contributed to a better distribution of organic products. The local SMEs in the organic sector are now receiving support with distribution in the form of new platforms for product promotion and logistics. The equivalent of 86,000 euros went to this support's coordination. The inspiration came from France, Italy and Romania. So we have just seen another set of very inspiring projects where they were inspired by other countries and brought some improvements to their regions. And now it's my pleasure to ask my colleague, Lorenzo David, who is responsible for monitoring projects in SME competitiveness, to tell us who's the winner for SME's competitiveness topic. Lorenzo, tell us. So who's the winner? Well, dear participants, good morning also from my side. It is with pleasure that I can announce now the winner of this category. We are talking about an inspiring story coming from an outstanding project. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of this category is Trino. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you, Lorenzo. And I have the pleasure to invite Anita Molka from Development um, Agency in Slovenia. Uh, good morning, Anita. Congratulations. Thank mm. you, Lorenzo. <laughs> Hello to so, everybody. Congratulations, Anita. So, Trino won. Thank uh, you. How does it feel, how does it feel uh, to be one of the winners? Well, I'm very honored that uh, I have now the possibility to present our project in this event. <laughs> I'm very happy we have you. Thank you. Uh, so again, just like asked uh, Dorota, can you tell us what Trino is actually about? Um, well, Trino project uh, focuses on competitiveness promotion in European regions through uh, improving the policy instruments for business support. And the focus is on um, applying digital innovation and uh, entrepreneurship also in traditional sectors. So in Slovenia, we prepared and implemented uh, actually two actions that was uh, also pointed out in our stakeholder meetings. Uh, so um, the first action is that uh, improved voucher scheme for SMEs and uh, also micro companies. And the second action, subsidized trainings for craftsmen to boost digital innovations and new innovative products. So it's about craftsmen. Uh, how how this change actually worked? Uh, what what did the craftsmen actually get uh, from from this change? How, how yeah? Can you explain maybe a little more concretely uh, how this is working? Uh, um, okay, the the first action, um, uh, the voucher scheme is also for the craftsmen if they have a micro company or SME but it's uh, for all the companies, for all SMEs. 
and um, the change was actually through operation on operational program through the Ministry of Economic Development and Technology. Um, since they attended the staff exchange in Ireland and transferred uh, good practice into Slovenian voucher scheme in some parts. So uh, our scheme now has simpler procedure and uh, companies receive grant uh, much quicker. Um, the, um, so the vouchers became widely used in Slovenia. And mm -hmm. uh, the second action when we have these trainings this is through LAC project. So we get um, inspiration from Trino project, um, from good practices in Arezzo and Florence. And um, we prepared um, a project uh, on LAC. So now craftsmen in our region, there's more than 100 of them in our network, uh, get free um, trainings on uh, sales, marketing, um, uh, digital tools and uh, product design. Mm -hmm. So if I think about a craftsman, so someone weaving a basket or making earrings, uh, so what you are providing with this voucher is really how to use some digital tools to maybe sell these uh, more efficiently. Do I understand correctly? Yes, this is through LAC project and through um, the voucher scheme. They can also apply to the voucher for digital innovations. They can also um, their um, the um, uh, it's possible to open an online store. It's eligible cost or also to establish a website. So this is very useful for the craftsmen and um, yeah, they get some trainings how to use also digital tools. Mm -hmm. Have you received already any feedback from these craftsmen, from these companies? What do they think? Uh, have they already kind of, have, have you heard anything already from them? Are they happy about this? Mm, yes. First, I would like to mention that um, the ministry who prepared this voucher scheme is uh, very grateful to Trino project since um, it allowed them to cooperate with the Irish colleagues to prepare this voucher scheme and the results in Slovenia are beyond expectations and um, very positive feedbacks are gained uh, also from the craftsmen um, that we provide this training through the LAC project in our region um, very positive feedback still now they have uh, free um, trainings and uh, the rest will be in the next year because now because of the COVID um, uh, the project is on standby and it is prolonged. Yeah unfortunately we are living in very difficult times these days when yeah. many projects had to be put on hold or slowed down or adjusted. Uh, no this is this is great this is really great to hear that it's really the companies who are appreciating very much the change that you brought from other corners of Europe. Um, maybe uh, just as we are all already kind of reaching middle of our event, maybe I can welcome now Dorota as well and uh, I can have a look whether we have any questions coming from the audience. Dorota, can you join us as well? Yes, yes, of course. Just, just the camera. Yes, yes, we are waiting. Super. So to both of you, uh, well, we, I haven't seen any questions coming directly from the audience, but I personally, and I hope that our viewers will be uh, interested to, maybe you can tell us some tips uh, that helped you achieve uh, this, uh, these results. Uh, uh, so maybe I, I can still continue with you, Anita. Uh, would you have any tips, uh, because we had majority of our viewers from projects, Mm -hmm. uh, what helped you? What are some of the tips? Um, One, two tips uh, for others. Um, yes, first I would like to mention the importance of uh, strong cooperation with the policymakers and uh, also their willingness to um, get something useful from European project. That's the key to success, I think. Um, we learned that uh, we always need to answer the challenges of the managing authority at that time not just say this is what we have uh, what would like what would you like out of it and if we don't have anything interesting for them at that moment we need to find something that is in line with what they are dealing with uh, in that moment or near future this is so really um, kind of aligned yeah 
align your work with the managing authority. Dorota, what about you? Do you have any tips uh, for, for, for our project? What helped you maybe achieve uh, your results? I would support what uh, Anita just said, the good relations with manager authority. And by good relations, I'm not um, I'm not uh, meaning on, uh, only the contact, the constant contact. It really have to have to be um, a, a good talk, good climate, and um, and uh, yeah, the good arguments to convince the managing authority that they that they should, for example, in in what was in in our case. Uh, organize additional call for proposals because as you can see it's not uh, as, uh, as you as you know it's not uh, the decision of uh, one person it's uh, the institutions it's a monitoring committee so there are a lot of people you have to convince to your uh, to your argument so this is very important the good relations with uh, with people in managing authority and um, if I look at the other side of, of the project, I mean the, the cooperation with companies, it's patience. Be patient because you cannot change the attitude of people. You cannot change their behavior um, and way of thinking uh, within the project lifetime, within one or two years. But it's a good start. It's a really good start. And uh, it makes uh, it makes for for us, for example, a, a new start for um, for creation of original innovation innovation strategy. So this is this is very important that we can bring and take those uh, those um, those thoughts and and lessons learned from the from the project, and then use them in a longer longer term in in our policy. So this is be patient <laughs> okay so it sounds very personal uh yeah build these relations and expect that the learning will bring fruit uh along the way well ladies uh thank you so much and congratulations to your projects uh so thank you very much uh, for all your answers i hope uh, that they were inspiring uh, for our audience and now let's move to another topic. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So let's talk now about low carbon economy. Let's have a look at stories which represent cooperation results in the low carbon economy. We have seven of them. In the Czech Republic, our project Innovasump help to cut pollution. Citizens and tourists in Prague can now contribute to cutting CO2 emissions by taking the first electric bus in town. The equivalent of 13.6 million euro of ERDF went to the trials and the purchase of a new bus fleet. The inspiration came from Cyprus and Italy. In France, our project set up contributed to smarter management of energy demand. Thanks to new ways of storing, converting and consuming energy, locals will soon be enjoying greater energy security. The inspiration came from Spain, the United Kingdom and Portugal. In Germany, our project support contributed to cutting CO2 through better data sharing. The locals will soon be able to take part in monitoring their greenhouse gas emissions using widely accessible data portals. They will be able to protect the climate. The portals received over 550 euros of ERDF in support. The inspiration came from Romania. In Hungary, our project Rebus contributed to better energy efficiency data monitoring. The local authority is progressing towards a low carbon economy by renovating its public buildings and by better monitoring their resulting energy efficiencies. The inspiration came from Italy, Romania, Greece, Sweden, and the United Kingdom. In Italy, our project Regiomob contributed to greener transport. Locals now have an improved travel planner and an integrated ticketing system, enabling them to travel in a more sustainable way. Soon, there will be more mobility options under the park and ride scheme. 
2 million euro of ERDF went to these mobility solutions. Inspiration came from Slovenia and the United Kingdom. In the Netherlands, our project Resolve contributed to rolling out green mobility for retail. The locals are now enjoying a new bike sharing system thanks to an improved mobility policy with several sustainable transport solutions. The inspiration came from Sweden, the United Kingdom and the city of Rotterdam. And finally in Slovakia, our project Last Mile contributed to setting up new public transport information terminals. Local inhabitants and visitors are now enjoying new flexible transport options when visiting local natural heritage sites. Two plans improving mobility received 6.34 million euro of ERDF. The inspiration came from Austria and Luxembourg. So we've just heard another seven stories, this time from low carbon economy. And I have the pleasure to ask my colleague, Verena Priem, who is a policy officer following projects in low carbon economy, to announce the winner in this category, in this topic. So Verena, who's the winner? You know, uh, Nobel Prize jury. Now, we're not in Oslo, but it almost, almost feels so. Uh, and in any case, did you know that uh, Nobel is almost a perfect anagram of low carbon economy? <laughs> I'm thrilled and honored to announce the winner. They got 35% uh, of the votes. They celebrated their final conference last year in Kozani in Greece. The lead partner comes from Italy. Congratulations to Regiomob. So Regiomob or Regiomob is the winner for low carbon economy. And with this, I would like to invite Giorgio uh, and now yes, yeah, Scavino and Andrea Vignoli uh, to join us and to tell us something more about their project. Thanks a lot, Verena. You're welcome. Giorgio, Thanks, bye. Andrea. <laughs> Can you join me, please? Uh, hi. Hello, Andrea. Hello, yes. Giorgio. So, congratulations. Congratulations. So maybe Giorgio. Tell us a little more about your project, Regiomob. What is it about? Can you hear us, Giorgio? Thank you very much, uh, Irma. Thank you very much, uh, Verena. Uh, we are proud to, uh, of this result obtained thanks to the commitment of uh, all partners and stakeholders, inclusive, uh, obviously, the policymakers, and uh, of course, uh, for the intelligence of the Interreg Europe program that has made possible the entire process. And uh, we worked through um, building regional action plans uh, on sustainable mobility. Um, and uh, a very important novelty brought by Region Mob project was also the uh, adoption of a new point of view. In general, uh, sustainable mobility is uh, um, focus on uh, a city, but um, uh, our work was uh, to shift uh, the attention from the single city to the region and also to the interregional level to understand the level of influence of mobility flows. Uh, so making people and politicians uh, uh, feel that uh, uh, was possible to generate a concrete way uh, together with stakeholders. Uh, and uh, thanks to the study visits uh, in other countries, in particular for our case, uh, Lazio region, uh, improve uh, uh, park and ride and uh, uh, intelligent transport system, uh, thanks to the, um, uh, to the knowledge uh, reached by uh, other cities like uh, Ljubljana and uh, Edinburgh, uh, where uh, the politicians and the experts of the municipality uh, of Rome and the, the region Lazio uh, in, uh, tackled with the uh, hands the uh, improvement possible at the regional, interregional level. So we get actively involved, uh, the policymaker, uh, to, uh, to get a real change. That's, that's great. Thank you for, for introducing and explaining uh, what your project uh, was about or is about and where you actually found the inspiration. 
So as you both are representing the regional association of municipalities in Lazio region, maybe Andrea, explain what have you actually changed? What is the change that the Regio Mob brought to Italy, to your region? Yeah, thanks. Uh, yeah, first of all, I should like to say that uh, just to let understand the, um, yeah, the territorial uh, situation where we started, is that we um, we have started to talk about the uh, metropolitan city of, of Rome, uh, considering that uh, are more more than four million of inhabitants and uh, and 1.5 million uh, lives outside the city of Rome. So um, the first uh, goal that we obtained is to change the behavior of the policymakers in order to don't consider only the city of Rome for the sustainable mobility policies, but also include the, uh, all the other municipalities that are in the metropolitan city um, of Rome, um, because you have to uh, really to, to change the mentality and consider also the, the, the first mile of, uh, of mobility when you, when, you, when you should like to improve the, uh, the use of local public transport system and to integrate different um, sustainable mobility um, solutions. Uh, the main uh, the main change that we obtained because uh, so we were able to uh, to dedicate uh, two million euros of ERDF uh, in our region in order to improve the uh, existing uh, info mobility system in uh, in our region in order to uh, to include all the local public transport system of all the municipalities uh, in the metropolitan area of Rome. Um, so uh, giving them the, and installing in all the buses, the, the onboard unit in order to can have the uh, real time information in, um, included in this, uh, in this system, online system, in order to allow citizens to better use and easily use the local uh, public transport system and uh, integrating also uh, a route planner in order to can have uh, um, sure information and easily have this information in order to plan their trip and um, integrating also the uh, e-ticketing uh, system in order to can use all the public transport system in the metropolitan city of Rome with only one ticket. And so uh, pushing people to easily use this form of, uh, of transport <laughs> for the daily movement, uh, dedicated mainly for the daily commuters, obviously. Well, I, I think all of us who ever went to Rome now can think, well, you know, I can even travel a little behind uh, around the region just with one ticket. So I think all of us can be excited about this. Uh, when you think about the project, about this change, uh, Giorgio talked about uh, inspiration coming from Slovenia, coming from Scotland, from the United Kingdom. Uh, can you think about the most exciting part of this discovery of in, in inspiration for what you can actually bring back to Italy? Can you explain what was maybe the most inspiring, most exciting element of this exchange of ideas? The yeah the most exciting one my idea in my uh, opinion is uh, as I said before the, the, this change of behavior uh, when they have uh, tried uh, physically tried during the the field visit um, the integration of this uh, different uh, sustainable mobility uh, solutions in uh, in but uh, in both area in uh, in the metropolitan area of Ljubljana and the metropolitan area of Edinburgh, uh, it was really clear. I mean, how it can uh, it, um, affect on the uh, on the daily uh, movement of citizens, and also the um, the, the the exchange of, of ideas, and also to to, to directly listen from. Uh, their colleagues, I mean, the, the policy makers in Scotland and Slovenia, uh, how they have uh, um, realized such uh, investments and they have 
uh, designer, the, the solution was really interesting. Um, the main uh, the main um, the main goal uh, is it was to uh, so involve the policy maker directly since the beginning of the project in order to let uh, born inside them I mean this uh, new mentality <laughs> new way to think about sustainable mobility because the project can support them obviously but uh, it's important that they uh, let start born inside them this uh, and so they are really fully involved and, and um, in uh, in this change because it's important that they will insert they will include this uh, new mentality in all the day by day activities that they will improve because the the project support cannot be present i mean uh, every day there <laughs> can be say uh, every day in their office and it's important that this new mentality uh, start. Uh, it's, it's for that, I mean, also that uh, consider that in uh, the, the, the change is not stopped with the end of the project. Uh, consider that after the, the end of the project, uh, Lazio region has included um, some tips coming from regional project in as the, uh, inside the priorities uh, designer for the new programming period. And this is the last week, last two weeks news. <laughs> okay, well, so we are hearing really something very fresh. It reminds me very much of what Dorota was talking about, that it's really very personal. So if people change their opinion, change their mind, get new ideas, that they carry it longer uh, with them and actually make even more sustainable change and more like a longer term change possible. Well, Andrea, Giorgio, thank you very much. Uh, we'll now move to our last topic, but we'll have a few more questions at the very end of uh, our event. So, George, uh, Andrea, thank you very much. And now uh, let's have a look uh, at our last topic, at environment and resource efficiency. Let's have a look at stories which represent cooperation results in the environment and resource efficiency. There are eight of them. In Bulgaria, our project CD ETA contributed to preserving memories thanks to digitization. Local inhabitants and visitors can now discover the past hidden in old photos in a digital form of their negatives or at a public exhibition of selected photos. The equivalent of almost 5,000 euros supported the digitization and the exhibition. The inspiration came from Spain. In Greece, our project SESME contributed to a more efficient use of resources. Thanks to the project, the local SMEs have been adapting their business practices for the circular economy. A new one-stop liaison office is promoting resource efficiency through networking among the local SMEs. The office received support of 920,000 euros of ERDF. The inspiration came from Denmark. In Lithuania, our project IMPACT contributed to protecting nature and promoting responsible tourism in two nature parks. Ecotourists will soon be able to admire the biodiversity in lagoons with cleaner water and more frogs, or enjoy an instructive walk across the, mo the moving dunes thanks to three projects, which received 195,000 euros of ERDF. The inspiration came from Romania and France. In Luxembourg, our project Nightlight contributed to protecting nature by darkening the skies in the local Natura 2000 parks. Birds and other animals won't be disturbed by excessive light in the nature parks anymore thanks to the park's management plans addressing light pollution. The inspiration came from Hungary. In Norway, our project Harry Coast contributed to a better stewardship of the local coast. The fragile beauty of the coast is better protected now while also keeping the coastal landscapes open to tourists. The equivalent of over 240,000 euros went into better conservation and cooperation activities in the local community. The inspiration came from France, or oh, sorry, Spain and Italy. In Romania, 
our project Retrace contributed to promoting high-tech recycling. The local SMEs can access funding to eliminate their waste by reusing or recycling it with the help of the latest scientific research. The inspiration came from Slovenia. In Spain, our project Cocoon contributed to better landfill covers. The local landfills will soon provide their towns with new land safely recovered in novel ways thanks to better landfill management. It received support of 2.36 million euro of ERDF. The inspiration came from Germany, the Netherlands and Belgium. And finally, in the United Kingdom, our project Green Pilgrimage contributed to empowering green tourism. A new off-peak tourism offer will soon be attracting pilgrims to come and admire local traditions in a sustainable way. A project to develop this offer and measure its sustainability received the equivalent of 5.8 million euro of ERDF in support. The inspiration came from Spain, Italy, Norway, Sweden and the county of Kent. So we have just seen the last set of projects, this time from environment and resource efficiency. And I have the pleasure to ask my colleague, Marie Guiton, who is a policy officer monitoring projects in this topic to announce the winner in this topic. So Marie, who's the winner? Hello, everybody. So, um, well, it's not as known yet as a Nobel Prize, but uh, still, uh, it's uh, our Interreg Prize, and I'm I'm happy to uh, unveil that this prize goes to Sesme, with 40% of the vote cast in this category. Congratulations for to Sesme. The competition was hard, uh, but uh, obviously because there were lots of good example of uh, changes, but obviously Sesme uh, was uh, high above uh, the, the other one. Well done. Well, thank you, Marie. And with this, I would like to ask Vasiliki Papadopoulos, uh, Kostas Michaelidis and Stavros, Stavros Mansanalis to join us. Good morning, uh, hello and congratulations. Uh, your project hello. received the hello. highest Hi. number of votes uh, from all the voting. How does it feel? Have you expected it? Well, I was about to leave the room. <laughs> <laughs> Hi Petra. Thank you very much. It is uh, really excited to uh, have these uh, results with uh, such a high score, as Marie said, and uh, we are really glad. We tried hard to promote uh, SESME uh, practices, so it's not like we were expecting this kind of result, but we really tried to do our best. <laughs> Well, that's great. Yeah, I'm very happy for you. Maybe we can start right away. Vasiliki, could you explain to our viewers what SESME is about? Okay, SESME uh, is about circular economy and it addresses SME's inclusion in circular economy. That means that it helps the improvement. It's tried to help and succeeded to a level to uh, improve local and regional policy instruments to support SMEs to enter and apply circular economy practices. So we were nine partners from six uh, partner countries who implemented the project activities and collaborated in this direction. <clears throat> So thank you for explaining that it's about circular economy for SMEs. Now, uh, Kostas, Stavros, tell us what has actually happened? What is the change in Central Macedonia that the project brought in? Um, well, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, well, actually, before the SESME project, we didn't really know a lot about circular economy. but. Uh, through SESME projects, we saw that there's a very big interest among our stakeholders. We did our analysis and we saw that there was a very big uh, potential in our region for circular economy. And since we had in our plans 
to create this one-stop liaison office to support entrepreneurship and innovation. We thought that it was, being, it was going to be a very good idea to add some elements into the operation of the one-stop liaison office that have to do with circular economy, to support our SMEs for getting financing, for getting uh, connections and network with the research institutes that would allow them to apply circular economy practices into their everyday business. And as you speak about this one-stop liaison office, that's where Stavros, uh, if I understand correctly, comes from. So can Stavros tell us, or you, about uh, the interest of local companies in this kind of advice, in this kind of information? Uh, how do the beneficiaries see this service? Are they uh, looking for information about application of circular economy principles in their company. So tell us a little bit about the interest. Uh, are they happy about this change in your region? Well, uh, the, actually the companies are keen to absorb any uh, innovation that can be actually applied and give them uh, some kind of uh, a competitive advantage. You, uh, either in the cost or in the new products, the sales. And uh, the difficulty now, the challenge here is that to, you know, to understand, they should understand it. Circular economy is not that, that you know, a fuzzy, a buzz, a sex word, a new word. It's, uh, it's both uh, saving the environment, the atmosphere, the biodiversity of the region, because this is a region with high potential and still in tourism, so we don't want to mess that up. And at the same time, uh, save the, the planet, save the, the tourism, save the biodiversity, uh, but also offer them uh, ways to be more competitive and uh, in the global uh, market. So they they absorb things, they you know, and we try to make things as simple as possible. And uh, we right now we're trying to develops uh, concrete projects in order for them to understand what this is all about because it's a it's a good it's nice to hear all this in theory and they want to apply things but you know it's difficult then so we try to, to develop some small concrete projects right now okay well thanks a lot stavro so it's really turning this theoretical idea in very concrete projects and showing the companies that there is a competitiveness at stake. If they apply this, it can actually make them more competitive. Now, back to you, Vasiliki. Uh, what would you say was maybe the most difficult in finding the right inspiration in other partner countries? Uh, was there anything challenging or you just went to one of these study visits or one of these meeting with partners and you immediately saw, oh, this is exactly what we are looking for. How would you maybe explain this part? Um, okay, uh, well, there was not a particular challenge that we had to face in this procedure. Uh, we were all very excited uh, whenever uh, we came across a new practice and uh, um, there, was all, there was also this procedure of discussion. Uh, but as uh, one of the previous uh, speakers said, uh, we always had to think about how we can adapt this to our uh, reality, to our local environment. And uh, there we had uh, the help and the support of our stakeholders group. So um, uh, it was not, uh, there was not a, a, a real difficulty, but it was a challenge of how to uh, uh, adapt uh, what we see in our reality, um, more or less. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, thanks a lot. Uh, thanks a lot, congratulations. And now let's move to questions. Uh, I would like to invite uh, Giorgio and Andrea uh, to join us as well. Uh, and let's have one common question for both of your projects. Uh, yeah, we have Andrea, uh, maybe Giorgio will join us as well, hopefully. Uh, so the question would be, 
uh, you both were talking about working with stakeholders or working with the actual beneficiaries. So in case of Greece, it's the companies implementing some uh, circular economy measures in Lazio is really the citizens understanding how this integrated uh, transport system works. So tell me, how, what kind of tips would you give to others when they need to reach out to these stakeholders, when they need to persuade the actual beneficiaries that what you bring in, that the change you bring in, it's actually good for them and works for them? So I, I don't know, maybe Andrea could uh, start. Uh, how did you do it in Lazio with, with your stakeholders and with your beneficiaries? Some tips. Yeah, I yeah um, I should like to say uh, uh, we have divided the, the involvement of the two different categories of stakeholders. So the policy makers, as I said before, involve them since the beginning. Uh, let burn inside them this uh, the idea and let, uh, as I say, uh, convince them that the uh, idea of the action plan, of the suggestion, the tips that you are going to, to submit to them, is born or are born uh, from them. I mean, so involve effectively them since, since the beginning of the project. And for the, all the other stakeholders, um, it's important to maintain high the attention uh, of them uh, and uh, um, try to don't let them think that it's not useful to participate in the project activities. So the main challenge uh, is to um, to let them understand that what we are doing is real and a concrete change can be uh, done and can be possible to be done. So um, it's important that the main tips that could be maintain with them um, a continued uh, communication, uh, involving them in all the project activities and uh, let them feel important for the change and giving them a, a key role. Okay, Kostas, how was it in Greece? Uh, yes, uh, I agree with what Andrea said, but I will just add one more thing. You have to be very well prepared and uh, you have to do your homework before you go and see your stakeholders. You have to have your analysis, your data, your uh, expectations, and you have to present to them what you have done and uh, when they, they see that you are very serious in uh, what you are going to do, uh, they are very willing to take part and uh, exchange the knowledge they possess with you. And also, you have to be uh, very careful in order to persuade them that what they are doing now, and the work that they are uh, giving to us, is going to be reflected in the next years in the financing tools that the region is going to launch. So these two elements are very, very, are really very important. Okay. Well, thanks a lot. Thanks to all of you. And again, congratulations on being Thank selected you, by all the people who voted. Thank you very much. And Thank yeah, you. wish you that all these new changes in your regions bring a lot of benefit to a lot of people. So thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. And with this, uh, we are almost at the end of our event. Uh, I would like to have uh, one more poll. Uh, we have our publication with all this information. Uh, so I'm interested whether after this event, after these discussions with people who were behind these changes, how much are you inclined to read the publication, to learn about all these stories and many more? There are 30. Uh, you have specific links going directly to the project's website so you can learn as much detail as you like. So please let us know, have you already read the publication? or this event inspired you to do it, or you're not sure yet. So please let us know. I'll give us five more seconds. I think that we can close the poll. So we can see that number of you have already had a look at our publication and we are very happy about it. 
uh, and many of you are inspired to have a look. So please have a look. You find much more information about all these 30 stories plus more in it. So with this, uh, let's have a few concluding remarks. Thank you for sharing the poll. And let's have a look. Uh, what else can you find? So you can find these results that we presented today to you at our project results page and many more. There is much more uh, material for you you can discover. Uh, last year we had another four projects um, featured in a web documentary in a form of videos. So you might have a look at those for some inspiration. Uh, you can find the publication at the link that's provided. And if you are interested to receive a print copy, you can just contact us at our email communication at interacteurope.com. Just put publication in the subject and we'll be very happy to send you a print copy if that's what you're interested in. And for other updates about our program, if you have not signed up yet to our newsletter, that's the best source to receive our monthly information, what's new in the program, what new results we are featuring and presenting, and you can get inspired. So with this, I would like to thank all our speakers and all my colleagues for support. And I hope that with these results, you will find inspiration also for your work and improvements through cooperation in your own regions. Please, at the end of this event, there will be a short pop-up survey and we ask you for other uh, ideas that you have for similar events or similar uh, webinars. Please let us know what other kind of events you would like to see. And with this, I wish you a wonderful day and get inspired by cooperation. Thank you, have a good day. Thank you.